So you're thinking about moving to Canada, being and getting a taste of our great Canadian women, a great Canadian hockey, and a great Canadian healthcare. But you know what the one thing is that you never get heard about when you want to move to Canada? Is the temperatures. And right now, as you can see in my shop, we're sitting at, oh, about minus 14 Celsius. And right around that uh, looks about uh, ooh, eight degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, that's inside my shop. And unfortunately it's not insulated. So it makes it a bit of a challenge when the winter is like this. And, um, but what, would they, what would they, they don't tell you is that in these temperatures, you find out real soon things that don't, may, that don't necessarily work or won't necessarily work on your vehicles. Case in point. I'm working on the Forester today. And why am I working on this? Well, two reasons. Well, technically three. It needs an oil change, which is a given. Uh, the transmission is leaking and the block heater has stopped working. Now of those three, um, the oil change is the easiest. Transmission is probably just a bad pan gasket and the block heater is the worst. And that is because, um, block heater is composed or is comprised of two parts uh the first part is the cord itself and the cord basically runs down to the block heater that's in the block itself and then from there it goes to the actual block heater element within the engine block and there's a couple of tests that you can do to see um which one is having the issues so for an example if i find wherever I put my multimeter, somewhere in my shop. Just had it yesterday, but moving stuff all around, so who knows where anything is right now. Let's see, multimeter, multimeter, multimeter. Oh, multimeter, where did you go? There we are. So just grab your whatever type multimeter you have. And then we take it over to the car. And then when you're at the car, now this is where the easy one is. So the easy one So the first easy test to see what the heck's going on if your block heater isn't working. And I know mine's not working because when I plug it in there's no noises. So if I put it on continuity, you'll be able to hear it beep here in a second. So I know continuity is good, but the problem is, is that there should be between about 8,000 to 35,000 ohms on this plug. And right now I'm getting a big fat reading of zero. So somewhere in this block heater, whether it's the cord, who knows, maybe it's just unplugged from underneath. Um, maybe the cord is unplugged, maybe the cord is bad. I don't really know which way it is on this one, um, but the first step I'm gonna have to take is pulling the lower tray off the car. Once I have that off, I'll be able to get a better idea and do some further diagnosis below. So I'm gonna pull that tray off now, once I have it off, uh, I'll bring you guys back and then we'll see what it's like under the car. So, got the cord removed from up top. So we're now under the car. So just to get us sort of an advantage point. This is the front. This is exhaust manifold. And you can see the cords hanging down here. And it's all the way down here. If you follow it, it goes up between this line right here and then it kind of snakes in behind and then if you look up here right there that's your block heater and now the big issue with this is that because there's coolant in the block right now for you to remove this basically means that you got to drain the coolant so you have two choices at this time if you go further than this you can do one more test, which I'll just do here in a second. Um, but after that test, you have two choices. You can either just pull, you're either gonna have to 
drop the intake or the exhaust manifold down because you might be able to get up in there but it's going to be a pretty tight fit so you'll probably end up having to drop the exhaust manifold out and then when you pull that out it's basically going to drop any coolant that you have in the block so you can either do it from the radiator if you want or you can do it from here just be prepared that if you do it from this side it's going to make a big mess so i would recommend the radiator but if you want to live on the edge you can do it from here so i'm going to unplug this cord and then that way i can do a check on the cord itself and then i'll do a check on the actual block heater element but i have a feeling the block heater element is bad in this so i'll grab my multimeter and be right back so i've got it unplugged so you can see the three orange and it basically is the same as this so generally this bottom one is the ground and then the two are the power it doesn't really matter um, how you test it you just can do a continuity test if you want there's the plug that goes into the block heater and then this is the end here which plugs into your house or wherever you want to plug it into so first thing we're going to do is we're just going to do a standard continuity test because this will let us know if the actual cord itself is fine so we're just going to stick one end in here and then we'll just do a test off this side that's good. Do it off the other side. We're good. And off the ground. And we're good. So we know the cord is good. So now we definitely know for sure that the problem lies in the heater itself. But basically, once we're at this point, set your own meter to 20,000 or higher if you can. Mine stops at 20,000 but goes to 200,000. So I'm just going to ohm test across the two non the two terminals that doesn't include the ground and then I can see where we're at when you do this you want to try and not touch the housing and I'm getting a big fat reading of zero so I now know that the problem with this lies in the actual element itself so I don't know if I can get enough light up in there but that's the element and that prong those two prongs in there um, are the ones that I checked for ohms and there was nothing so that tells me that that guy is is toast so because you can see how tight it is in there the only way that you can get this out now is basically like I said dropping the exhaust manifold dropping the coolant and then going from there I noticed that there is oil coming off the bottom of the oil filter over here too so you can see that. So that tells me that the cooler lines are leaking on that. So I think if I'm gonna end up dropping the exhaust manifold, I'll probably do those as well. And then uh, we'll go from there. So for now, this is where basically I'm gonna leave it because um, there isn't much else that I can do right now. All right, back out in the shop again, working on the Subaru, finishing up the, uh, the stuff on the bottom going to try and get the O2 sensor, the oil cooler maybe, and the block heater done today. Hoping, but we'll see. Um, doing any of these um, requires the drop of the exhaust manifold. Dropping the exhaust manifold poses its own problems. Um, I was already under there, heated it up and got the penetrating oil on. So I can get all the bolts out for the exhaust manifold, fairly simple. Um, none of them are gonna break, they're all fairly loose, which is good. Um, once I get everything completed, I'll be obviously anti-seizing the stuff so that it'll come off easier. Um, when I started this video last time, I uh, showed you how considerably colder, how considerably cold it was here um, over that, since then and since me working on this, um, you can see that just over a few weeks it can go from being absolutely unbearable to being quite warm uh so i figured hey you know what let's take advantage of this nice warm weather and let's get some stuff done on the cars and enjoy it while we can because it's still january in canada and it can still get considerably much colder but for now it's warm and we're going to work on that um in my last video uh or my last clip i should say um one of the things that i was talking about was the block heater itself which goes into the car and um, one of the things that I had said was that the ohms between these two terminals here 
should be something like 35,000. Um, I thought that that sounded a little high. So I went back and I took a look and actually um, what I read was that you want the ohms to be um, somewhere in the eight to 35 range. So um, I'm not gonna check the one under the car, but I went and picked this one up from pick and pull um, off of another car. And you can see if I hold it here, you can see that that one settles in at about 35 ohms. So I know that this one is good and that's where they should be. Now, I don't know, I still can't say because now of this new information, um, if the one in the car is, is um, good or not, then the uh, other thing that we're gonna be needing to be done is the oil cooler. Now the oil cooler or heater or whatever Subaru wants to call it under the car is up, you can't really see it, but it's basically up inside there. And it's actually what the oil filter attaches to. And it's got lines and stuff like that and O-rings. And basically what happens is, is that the O-ring inside um, gets old. And in doing so, it starts to fail. So if you go to your Subaru dealership, you can pick up a bunch of things. You can pick up some of these hoses. So you can see here, this is this little kink. Here's the part number for it from Subaru, 807-611-031. And then there's this other one, which is kind of similar, sort of the same kink to it. Um, part number on that is 807-611-1171. And then you pick up another one. And I think this one is the same as the other one. But um, same idea. So no, the other one was seven one and this is six one. And then you'll need uh, the oil cooler gasket itself, which is 21370KA001. And then depending on, the, depending on the shape of your hoses and your clamps, um, you may wanna get some of these. Now these little guys, they're like six bucks a piece. So, you know, you, you may not need to, to replace them and the ones you have may be fine but you know for me to spend the ex I, I I'm just like you know what I'll just spend the extra few dollars and um, get all new ones underneath there because in that way I know that the lines are good and I know that the clamps are good and I know that everything under this side is good and I don't have to worry about anything so um, where I'm at now is basically um, in the exhaust manifold has three bolts, two here and one on the inside, and same over here. And then you've got the three around here um, that attaches your, your pipe to the back of the car, which someone hacked. I'm going to assume this car was a victim of catalytic converter theft at one point in time. I do plan to cut this all out, uh, both sides, and actually put the proper size pipe in here. It looks like this is probably a two inch to two, two and a quarter, two and a half inch pipe. And this looks like it's two inch. So I would like to get the proper size pipe for in there um, to get that cleaned up as well. But for now, it's basically gonna be oil cooler, uh, block heater, which is up inside there, up and behind there. And then the O2 sensor on the front side over here. The reason why we're doing the O2 sensor it's because we're getting that typical good old fashioned PO2040 or whatever it is code on this thing. Um, you can do all the reading you want and some say it's the O2 sensor, some say it's the catalytic converter. Um, could be the rear O2 catalytic or the rear O2 sensor. But um, there's a bunch of tests you can do. I've got a Tactrix cable that I could plug in and, and, and see what's going on with that. But for the cost of the, for the, cost of the O2 sensor, you know what? I'm just gonna change it out. So I'm still gonna to need to pull the coolant out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spend the next few minutes getting the exhaust manifold off because I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it just by dropping it and not having to take off that back pipe or if I can just pull it all down at the same time. So I'm gonna get that all ripped out, get that out. Once that's out, then I can bring you guys back and I'll show you a little bit more about what I'm doing and then we'll move forward and start doing the work. So we'll get that done and then we'll see you in a few minutes. All right, so 
this is the exhaust manifold off and this is the primary O2 sensor. I have no idea when it was last changed. It could be original to the car. I do not know. Um, we are putting a new Denso in it. Uh, part number on that is 2349123. Um, looks like maybe the left side was burning a little bit of oil or running a little rich. Can't really say, but I'm just going to clean up this flange a little bit here. Yeah, it's pretty gross. All right, got some carb clean. Just trying to get this cleaned up a bit just so that the new gasket will be on there and try and prevent as much in the way of leaks as we can. I know it's not always possible, but we'll do our best. So I'm okay with that one. And I'm good with that one. So if you're ever doing O2 sensors, one of these guys, one of these guys here is gonna be your friend. It's basically an O2 sensor puller. It's got a slit in it so that the wire can slip over it. And then the other end just fits over the O2 sensor and then you just crank on it. Now, obviously doing this in the car would be better because you give yourself the room to turn. But as you can see, the tool, even with this thing not being very warm, the tool basically did all the work for me. And I just gotta get it out. So it looks like the secondary one in this was changed at some point, probably because it's the cheaper of the two. I mean, it doesn't look bad, but something isn't right in here. So we're just gonna change it out. And then that way we know it's good. Got a new clip on it. Nice. Let's see if the things are the same length. Mm. New one is a bit shorter. Should fit, hopefully. Um, I'm a bit impressed. They usually will send anti C's which they did on this one. They sent some, they sent some, but the nice thing about this is that's the actual the copper type too. I prefer the copper type because it's better for different type materials. Also has a tendency to withstand heat a little bit better, I find. And I don't want to get any of this on the actual element itself. So you just run your finger around it. Anti-seize on there, nice and clean. We can rethread that one. Get a little tool. And we're good. There. New O2 sensor is there. We got the gaskets. For that one, the gasket for that one, and then we got one for the main join down here. So there's our new gaskets. So that's pretty much it for the O2 sensor. Hopefully, um, you know, as she's driving this thing and she's going around, um, So yeah, so new new gaskets for all three, new O2 sensors installed. This one has the nice little 
cover here, which I'm just going to assume keeps debris and crap from going down inside here and causing any issues with the, the catalytic converter and all the piping in here. So we'll just let that be. Um, so that's that for that. Um, she'll have to drive, the girlfriend will have to drive it to see basically um, if it makes a difference in, uh, in this thing. We, she's, she's been complaining for a while. Um, that the fuel mileage has gone down drastically. It's not as good as it should be. So hopefully that changes that. Um, now that we have the exhaust manifold out, we can take you down here and we can show you a little bit more of what's going on. So, right here is our block heater, which we have to change out. Um, don't know what style this one is, but the one we're going to put in there is going to be proper for Subaru. So there's that. And this is the oil cooler. And you can see just how gross and grimy that is. And it's just so much, like it just gets so caked in oil. And none of this oil is from above because on the Subaru, the, um, the fill spout is on the driver's side, not the passenger side. So any of this oil that you're seeing here is all because of this cooler and it all leaks from up top there where you replace that o-ring so that's the other thing that we got to do on here so let's see if this one is actually good or bad based off of the new findings so this one is showing it's good too so i don't know why this one was not working because i'd plug it in and it would make no noise or do anything when i was using it and it has me curious let's just hook this up because i don't have to replace this and I'm okay with not having to replace it because I'd rather not drop coolant unless I had to and only have to work on that, on the oil cooler. And the way you know if it's working is you can hear noise of the coolant. So that noise that you just heard, that's the block heater coming on. I'm not sure why, but according to this, everything is working. So right now, I don't need to worry about the block heater in this because the block heater is perfectly fine. So for now, I'm just gonna leave that alone. And I have a spare if down the road I need it. Since the block heater is fine, I don't have to worry about that today. This makes my job just that much easier. Now, I still may have to drain the coolant. Well, pans out, you know what that means? Coolant's gotta come down. So it looks like Subaru's drain plug is right here. Or it's gonna prove me wrong and then it's gonna come spewing out of there. But I think for right now, it just looks like it's just gonna come out with this plug like most other coolant. All right, we'll let this drain and then we'll come back. Okay, so we're just finishing and take, starting off where we were right yesterday. Uh, I got the coolant drained out. So my next will be working on this. Um, nothing too difficult about this. Taking these two lines off, dropping the oil filter, dropping down the nut, taking off the cooler, um, taking this line and this line off. Um, will definitely be some coolant in there, so we want our tray underneath. Um, I'm probably just going to make a cut uh, in the middle of this one, and most likely if I can, the middle of this one. If not, um, then I'm just going to cut the the hose to slip them off. Trying to um, trying to pull them off will probably be a lot more difficult than it needs to be. So we just want to grab the two or the new lines that we got, just to make sure everything lines up, which it should without a problem, but you never know. It's better to check. So there's the one hose there. There's the other hose up there. So here's the one replacement hose. And I'm pretty sure this one looks like it goes right here. That one goes there. So this hose here is the part number 807611161. So that one works good. And I got my other one here, which I'm pretty sure uh, it looks like it's got too much angle. That this other one is in fact this one it's just yeah it's just a little bent so that one there so this one up here is 807 we we'll get those two cut 
So, first cut. Let's get my cutters in there. We'll just make a little cut on the bottom. I always hate coolant. It's always so messy and sticky. Now, if you're lucky, or unlucky, depending on how you look at it, these clamps will be in a position in your favor. And if you're not lucky, they'll be in a position that makes it very, diffi that makes it very difficult to get at. And this is why another reason why I kind of recommend replacing these four, because they do get... You can see this one's getting quite mangled trying to get this one off. So I'm glad that I bought new ones. This one's almost off. All right, so there's that piece off. And then we'll get this other one. And this one I was able to get at a little bit easier. So get at this one. And that's two. That one I'm just gonna leave because I can take that one off with the uh, oil cooler. But I'm gonna drop this now, so get your pan for oil because it's going to leak. And I do have the car angled quite a ways backwards, so hopefully most of the oil is run to the backside, but I'm still gonna get some oil out. So just let that drain for a minute. Woo, she's cold. So this is the inside of it. I'll try not to get oil on it. But basically this piece here is what your oil filter screws onto. And up inside is a nut. You undo that and that whole piece comes out and then the whole thing drops. And I think from what I've read, that inside should be, yep, 15 sixteenths. You can see it moving. So there's that nut. Just screws up inside there. Let that leak out a bit. All right, so once you have it out, this is basically what it looks like. So this is where your nut went through. Your oil filter attached here. One coolant line, another coolant line. And then this is that O-ring that deteriorates and allows the oil to bypass. And basically all you gotta do is just grab a pick and pop it out. And if you look at it, that sucker is no longer round, it's flat. It loses its shape. And when that happens, then it starts to leak. And basically what this does is as the engine is warming up, the coolant flows through this, so the oil and the coolant are warming up. And because generally the oil will warm up faster than the coolant, as the coolant flows through this, the oil is actually heating the coolant to allow the car to warm up faster. So what we're gonna do is just take a few minutes here, grab some carb clean. We got a little bit of left and we're just going to Clean this all up nice. So, we'll get this all cleaned up, make it look good and new again. Put no ring in it, and we'll get it back in the car. Once I've done that, then I'll bring you guys back. We'll continue from there. Once we get this installed, I can get this hose off as well. And then once we get this all installed, um, then we can be doing basically putting everything back together, exhaust manifold, coolant back in, oil. Um, when you're doing this, I'd probably recommend picking up an extra quart, maybe two of oil just to make sure the system stopped off because you will lose some. Same thing with coolant. 
Um, I'd recommend that if you're dropping the coolant, either go and do a complete, put all new fluid back into it, um, or at least uh, put a jug of new fresh in there and then just mix the rest in. Uh, your choice. I prefer all the new fluid, but budget, time constraints, everything else like that will matter. So I'll get this all cleaned up, we'll get it back in the car, and then I'll bring you guys back. Oil cooler, <clears throat> all nice and clean. Doesn't look like it's been sitting in eight months of sludge and grudge. Um, I was right. Um, it looks like the two hoses, or the hose on this one side, does have this variation of a clamp, which looks like it's designed to, I'm gonna say either support or protect the hose from something. Not sure, neat design. Um, this is the part number for this O-ring, for this O6. So I'm just gonna put that in. You can see it's still a little flat, but you can see just how much like more flexible it is and stuff like that. <clears throat> so it just goes inside like so. This one sticks up considerably a bit more than the other one, so that tells me that it's also not as flat and as worn out. Um, I've gone up here and I've cleaned the surface. So this surface is all nice and clean, ready for that, um, <clears throat> for the old cooler to go back on. That's clean, this is clean. So we're gonna get that back up and installed up top. Get her clamps and get her hoses ready. So just clean off a little bit of oil that's accumulating on there because we don't want that. Just gonna put a little bit of oil on the o-ring now I do notice that it's got a little notch on here we'll put our big nut up in here and see where everything kind of falls okay there's that just kind of loose and in place we got our one hose that we got to put back on here. Ow. Grab our pliers now. They do make proper pliers for doing these little clamps. I just don't have any, but I find just a good pair of adjustables usually work pretty well. All right, so that side is on. Man, doesn't it feel so nice when you're working on something and everything looks newish, and not so old and crusty? Now we're going to see which of these two are going to work better for this. So that goes up there. Well, let's just take a look and see. If I put this on here, yeah, that'll work. So now I want to put this on here. Yeah. So what we can do is we should just be able to do this because that remains pretty flexible. So we can put him onto there. And then figure out a way. All right, so now what we gotta do is we gotta figure out a way to get up top here. So we can get at that other clamp. Okay, I'm gonna try and find some needle nose pliers or something. Now this would be a lot easier obviously with the oil pan out, but guess what? Oil pan is not coming out today. Good. 
Now, oh, oh, take down our And this doesn't need to be Herculean strength, just tight. You're just trying to seat that O-ring up top. Now, I normally wouldn't say reuse your old oil filter, but we really just did an oil change on this thing like two weeks ago. So it'll be fine. All right. So Oil cooler is cleaned, O-ring is installed, two new hoses, two new clamps. We used these two just because it had the shields on it. It looks like actually that I'm looking at it, it might act like a heat sink because the exhaust manifold is fairly close. So it might act like a heat sink so it doesn't actually melt or burn. The bottom one I'm not so sure on. Um, could be the same reason, could be close. So um, that could be why it's on that side and not over here because this too, the exhaust manifold is further away. So, yeah, so that's hose, hose, two clamps, oil cooler has been rebuilt, O-rings new in there, so that should be good. So from here, we're basically going to get the exhaust manifold reinstalled, and once we have that reinstalled, then I'm going to um, lower the car back down. Well, maybe because it's up on ramps, so I don't really want to do it when it's up on ramps. Closing off the petcock here for the radiator, which doesn't seem to be going in. There we go. Felt like it was stripped or not sealing. So that's now closed. So that's closed off so I can put coolant back in this thing. That's all cleaned off. The hoses are done. The clamps are done. So exhaust manifold goes on and then it will be coolant and oil top off and then we'll be done. I'm going to get the exhaust manifold reinstalled and once I have that reinstalled, or actually you know what, I'm going to put coolant in this first. If I put coolant in it and any bit of this leaks, then I know ahead of time. I'll know more obviously once the vehicle is running, but obviously you can't run um, the vehicle with the exhaust manifold off. So I'll put the coolant in, make sure none of this leaks. Make sure that doesn't leak or anything else in the system leaks. Once I've confirmed that, then I can put the exhaust manifold back on and new gaskets for that and make sure none of that has any issues. And then once I have all that together, then I'll bring you guys back and show you where I'm going from there. All right, so got the coolant filler on there. Got uh, one full new jug in there. Use my coolant tester on that. Uh, which is the old coolant uh, and it found that that coolant is still good. I use one of these guys here. Um, basically it's got these colored discs in it and then they float based on the weight and this thing had five of them floating so this thing is still good to minus 37 degrees Celsius. So we're good there so we're not worried about that. I'm underneath here. You can see oil cooler all nice and clean. Got all that stuff on there. The um, radiator's full, block's full. Don't see any leaks around any of this. So that's good. So basically from here, we now get the joys of putting the, uh, the exhaust manifold back on, which I mean, it's not too bad. Um, the biggest issue with the exhaust manifold that you may run into on these, and one of the things that you may or may not wanna do when you are um, getting all parts together is that the exhaust studs on these things have a nice tendency to basically um, weld themselves together and then you can't get them apart. So these here are the studs and basically you can see that these came out of the block because the nut basically gets welded or seized, whatever you will, to the, the stud. So you can undo the nut, but you're actually undoing the whole stud. So um, we'll end, and then what'll end up happening is when you take this out, this'll be all one piece. So then you gotta figure out a way to get this off. Um, if you have the tools, I have a map torch over there and I have um, 
some PB blaster. So with some heat and some penetrating oil, I was able to get them all unseized. I did run uh, uh, um, a die down these to make sure that they're threaded properly and run a new tap through the nuts to make sure they were all clean. So those are, those are all good and back in there now. So I don't have to worry about those. Um, I am missing one nut that I will have to track down for the, um, for the pipe that connects to the catalytic converter side of things. So that's around somewhere. Just unfortunately I got things strewn everywhere. So I'll have to find that. And then once I have that, um, I can get this all back together and get that going up inside. Uh, yeah, so I'll just set you guys up again and we'll get this thing uh, going and move from there. Get our new gaskets. So this one here is for this side over here. And then we got the two for the upper side. They sometimes are direction specific, but these ones aren't, so I'm not gonna be too worried. So one of the things that I did is I pulled all the nuts off the studs so I can lift this up into place, thread a stud up, and then thread everything else. So just get, there was an old gasket on there. Okay, no more old gaskets. Now we can put the new one on. It's a nice new gasket there. And now it comes so we got the end on here, so just throw a nut on there, keep that in place, we'll get a stud, and we'll put this up in here, now the stud should bottom out in the hole, and if it does, you don't have to go any further, if the studs do come out, you can put some Loctite on if you want, but I'm not too concerned. All right, and then we'll just go along and put the rest of the studs in place. Now you could put the studs in place if you want before you put the manifold up, but you may not have the proper clearance. So, so I'll get this all finished up. Once I get this all installed, I'll come back and show you guys where I'm at. All right, O2 sensor plugged in, ready to go. And down the bottom, we have got the exhaust manifold installed. We've got the oil filter back installed. We got all the studs and nuts back on, all copper anti-seized on there. Make yourself a note, when you are putting these studs back in up here, this block is aluminum. Overdoing these, you can strip or pull the stud out and then you're gonna be in a big world of hurt. So be careful when you're doing that, just snug them down. So new gaskets installed in there. Good over here, new gasket there. Like I said, I'm gonna plan on changing this out at some point. I don't like that. It's not gonna, is it restrictive? I don't know, but it needs to be redone. It just looks gross. Um, as I said previously, I think it's a catalytic converter theft issue on this. Um, got the block heater cord up and out of the way. So we'll leave that be there. Uh, Got some coolant sitting here in the jug because we're gonna have to start this as I open up the door, but I want to do that before. Um, but the door needs to be open before I do any of that, so that's there. Um, I want to uh, make an apology. Um, it may have seemed like I was kind of all over the place with the block heater on this thing. I know the video started out with, excuse me, with me doing or looking at the block heater on this thing and possibly needing to do a repair on it. Um, what's what I found was is that once I got into this It wasn't necessarily the block heater and I don't know where the problem is So I'll have to check some cords. I'll have to check extensions and outlets and stuff like that um, So the the jumping around the indecisiveness is basically stems from that and I want to apologize for that But at the same time, I want to be honest um, You know, I feel that too many times people will try and hide things or not say things or do things and you know, cut stuff out and, and not let you see the, the challenges we come across when we're trying to do stuff like this. I'm not a mechanic by trade. This is all hobby. I've been doing this for since I was 15 years old. So, you know, as long as I continue to learn and I'm learning from my mistakes or I figure stuff out, you know, that's all I care about and that's all I want to be. If I can teach you guys something, great. If you guys can teach me something or we can teach each other something, great. You know, that's that's where I want to be and that's what I sort of, you know, want to do out of this. Sometimes the work we do is fun. When I work on the Camaro, 
it's fun because I know by the springtime or hopefully sooner, it'll be running. It'll be a great fun car on the street and we'll enjoy it and we'll be cruising around in it. You know, other times we work on the Subaru, you know, it may not be fun, but you know, at the end of the day, the girlfriend's happy and it makes her happy. And that's all I care about. Power steering is working awesome. The girlfriend says the car is so quiet. The car drives great. So, you know, at the end of the day, that's what it's about. So I'm going to sign off here. Thank you again for watching another video. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be an interesting year. Lots of stuff I hope to come go and get done, but um, I want to take you guys along. So the more you guys watch, the more you guys comment and help out with me, the more I'm going to want to help and, and do stuff for you guys. So until the next time, thank you. And we'll see you in the, in the next one when that is. I don't know what it is. Again, don't know, but there will be one soon. Thanks. Catch you later.